Hey everyone, Kevin P. McAuliffe here, and I am back again with another Creative Cow tutorial. And in our ongoing look at learning Avid's Media Composer and Symphony, in this lesson we're going to take a look at the essential tool for mixing inside of Media Composer and Symphony. And of course, I'm talking about the audio mixer. Now, the audio mixer serves more functions than just the standard mix, as you might be accustomed to. And in this tutorial, I'm going to go through the ins and outs of the audio mixer and I'm going to show you why with a little bit of forethought you can really help again reorganize yourself even more so so you can get clips into your timeline and work with them the way you want to quicker than ever. Okay, short introduction, let's just get into Media Composer and Symphony and let's get started. Okay, now again we are on the Mac for this tutorial so if I happen to get a couple of the shortcuts backwards by mentioning the Windows one first and then the Mac one you'll have to forgive me. Okay. Let's Command Tab, obviously an Alt Tab for all my Windows friends out there, but let's Command Tab into Avid's Symphony. Now, again, because we're working with audio, we're going to need some clips to work with inside of this tutorial. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on the sequences bin. Now, obviously, this is sort of violating my, you know, stay nice and organized because in most cases what I would do is I'd have a bin called audio that I would import all of my audio elements into. But in this case, we're just going to put them all into one bin because we're only dealing with a very few amount of files. So what I'm going to do is navigate to the voiceovers folder that's located on my desktop and I have two voiceovers here. I have a quiet one and I have a loud one. So what I'm going to do is just import both of them. You'll see that there is, this, these are actually broadcast WAV files, so I'm just going to say it's coming from a 2398 project. You'll see the starting time code is one hour. I'm just going to say OK to all. And here are my two audio clips. Now you'll see that I have the quiet dialog. Now what I'm going to do here again, from our last tutorial, we're going to open the audio tool. Command and 1 on the Mac. Control and 1 for all my Windows friends out there. And let's just shorten this up a little bit here because we only need to see about that much of it there. Perfect. And let's call up our quiet dialog. And I'm simply just going to hit play here. The way that I'm talking right now will be our quiet dialog. So there we go. That's our quiet dialog. You see it peaks up at about minus 20. Let's check out our loud dialog here. The way that I'm talking now will be our loud dialog. Now that peaks up all the way up at about minus four. So what I'm going to do, just for argument's sake, inside of this tutorial, is we're going to have everything peak at about minus 14. Now you remember I said minus 10 is sort of the reference that we normally use when working in television as sort of the loudest that we want our audio to go. But in this case, I need to pick something that's sort of in between uh, the value of sort of minus 20 and minus four. So I think minus 14 probably will work itself out pretty good. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take both these clips and I'm going to drop them into my timeline. Now you'll see right away that the first issue that we have is that these clips are both on the, the left that track right only. Will be our quiet dialogue. So what the we need to I'm do is we need to pan these dialogue. audio tracks right over into the center. Now, how we do that is with the audio mixer. Now, the audio mixer, again, located up inside of Tools, and it's located right here. Now, you're going to notice that we don't have a shortcut assigned to it inside a Symphony Media Composer. Now, for me, I have a shortcut mapped for Audio Mixer. It's F3 on my keyboard. So what I'm going to do is simply hit F3. Let's just make sure we're on our timeline here. You'll hear it's beeping at me. Now, for some reason, my settings may not have carried over from the Windows machine. So what I'll do is I'll just do it the old-fashioned way here. I'll just come up to Audio Mixer. There we go. And you'll see now that what I have is I have one active track. And you can see that I have one active track because it looks like I have the, uh, the little knob here to actually take it and pan things to the center. And I've also got my fader here that I can use to raise and lower the audio levels. Now, if I come back here, you're going to notice what I'll do is I'll just move the audio mixer over here and I'll call up the audio tool again because I want to show you that we actually can now see the audio in three places, one inside the audio tool, one inside the audio mixer, and one right over here inside my timeline. I'm just going to hit play here. The way that I'm talking right now will be our quiet And you can dialogue. see the way that I'm talking we now go. will be our loud dialogue. Now, let's talk about the audio mixer here for a second. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put the audio mixer over top of our project here, just so it doesn't keep appearing and disappearing. Now, the first and probably most important thing you're going to notice inside of the audio mixer is the fader. Now, I'm going to come back here for a second. The fader, fairly self-explanatory, much like you actually had a physical uh, mixer on your console, the fader is what we're going to use to either raise or lower our audio levels. Now, you'll see that we were actually pretty low here. What we'll do is actually just slide this again out of the way here. You'll see that when I play this clip back, the way that I'm talking right we're down now, at about minus 20. And what I want to do is I want to bump that up to about 5 dB higher than it is right now. And doing that in its most basic form is actually very easy. All I'm going to do is simply grab the fader and I'm going to drag it up to plus 5 dB. Now you're going to see what happens now if I play things back. 
the way that I'm talking right now, we're, we're now we peaking pretty now. much exactly where we want it to now, be. We'll now, we're going to deal with this second clip in just a second. But you'll see, again, like I said, adjusting this clip 5 dB, very easy. Simply grab the fader, drag it up. Now, what I'm going to do is just undo what I just did here by pressing Command and Z. You'll have to excuse me, all my American friends out there. I'm Canadian, so I do say... Uh, Z instead of Z, so I'm just going to say Command and Z to undo what I just did, because what I can also do here, if I know exactly how much I want to raise that audio or lower that audio by, all I have to do is simply punch it in on the numeric pad by pressing plus 5 dB, and you'll see that I can adjust it that way as well. Now what you're also going to notice, we've talked about this before, is on the timeline right now, the video and the audio tracks are active. Now I can actually disable any of these tracks uh, at any time. I can do it from the track itself. You'll see as soon as I deactivate it here, it deactivates itself in the audio tool, or of course, that would probably mean that I can do it right here from within the audio tool as well. Okay, now let's talk about uh, adjusting the pan on this clip, because again, the pan is only on one track, and with this, in this case, because it's narration, what I want to do is I want to have this mono, because my voice speaking right now, really only is one track. I mean, you could put it in stereo, but at the end of the day, it's just one track, me speaking. So you'll see, I hit play here. I'm talking right now will be our Not quite what I want. Now, what you're also going to have to keep in mind is as soon as I pan this to the center, we're actually going to lose 3 dB of volume. So I'm actually going to have to bump this up 3 dB again. So what I'm going to do is you can do this. You can take sort of the, the wheel here, and you can sort of drag it and turn it and kind of get it as close as possible. There we go. Or what you can do, I'm just going to undo what I just did here, is I'm going to select L100 and simply hit 0 on the numeric pad and hit Enter, and that's going to pan my audio to the center. You'll see if I come back now. The way that I'm talking right now will Very be nice. our quiet dialogue. Okay, what I need to do again, much like I said, is I need to increase the volume here by another 3 dB. So we want this to be 8 dB, and you'll see what we have now is the audio on two channels. right now will be our quiet dialogue. The way that I'm peaking talking at minus 14. Now, obviously, with our second clip, we're going to do just the opposite. Now, what I encourage most people to do is actually work in reverse to what I just showed you. The first thing I'm going to do is pan center. I'm going to hit zero on the numeric pad. So now we're pan center. And what I'm going to do now is just take a look at this clip. The way that I'm talking now will a be a little our bit too hot. I think I'm going to want that to come down about minus 6 dB. So let's just hit minus 6 on the keyboard. And you'll see now dialogue. The way that I'm talking now will be our loud dialogue. That's not too bad. It peaks at about the same. Dialogue. The way that I'm talking now will be our loud Probably dialogue. Probably a little bit too low. Maybe we'll just cut that in half here, minus 3. Now we'll see. I'm just going to come back here. The way that I'm talking there right we go. now will peaks be at minus 14. Dialogue. The way that I'm talking now will peaks be our loud dialogue. Peaks a little bit higher, dialogue. but you know what? It sounds very even. Take a listen. The way that I'm talking right now will be our quiet dialogue. The way that I'm talking now will be our loud dialogue. That's pretty darn close. Now, let's say hypothetically we've gone in and we've adjusted all of this from, you know, a hundred different voiceover clips inside of our timeline. Producer comes in and says, wow, that's really great, except, you know what, it's about 4 dB too low. We need to adjust that by 4 dB, and you're like, oh no, i got to go through and readjust every clip, one clip at a time. Well, fear not, you do not have to do that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to mark an endpoint right here. I'm going to come down here. I'm going to mark an out point. Now, on the flip side of this, this actually works with panning as well. What I'm going to do is come back to the first clip. I'm going to navigate up to our favorite little hamburger here, and you're going to see that we have a whole bunch of options in here to choose from. The first couple that I have are really the two that I was talking about here. One is set level on track into out and set pan on track into out. Now, set pan on track into out, fairly self-explanatory. If you have clips that are panned left, right, left, right, this is how you can get in and choose what you want it to be. Now, in this case, if I was to just come back here, and let's just pan this. We'll just pan this right back to the right here. It doesn't even matter where I put it. I'll just put it right there. What I'm going to do is I'm going to come back here to the first clip. You'll see that we're panned to the middle. I'm simply going to come in and say, set pan on track into out. What's going to happen is, is that Symphony is going to look at whatever the pan of the clip is that I'm parked on, and it's going to assign that to every clip that I have marked into out. Now, that works the same with the level. If this clip is at level minus 3, and I come in and I say, well, you know what? Set the level on the track into out. It's going to make everything minus 3, but I have a problem here. The problem that I have is, is that this clip is at plus 8. This clip is at minus 3, and let's just say, I think I said before I was going to raise it 4 dB. I'm just going to raise it 2 dB. What I want to do is just bump everything universally up to be 2 dB, meaning this clip is now going to be at plus 10, and this clip is going to be at minus 1. 
most people go through and they do it clip by clip, which, trust me, if you're dealing with, like I said, 100, 200 voiceover clips, you could be there forever. What we're going to do instead is we're going to navigate back to the hamburger. I'm going to drop the hamburger down, and I'm going to adjust the pan or volumes on track into out. And as soon as I select that, you'll see that I can adjust the gain from minus 6 to plus 6. I don't know why we're limited to that. You'd think that we'd be able to do it, you know, whatever we want. That's okay, though. What I'm going to do is say, let's adjust the gain by plus 2 dB across the board. Now, you'll see again, right here, we're at plus 8. So this should immediately jump to plus 10. Perfect. And this clip here was at minus 3. So it should now be at minus 1. Very cool. Now, you're going to see that we have some other options inside of the audio mixer. What we can also do is we can solo. You'll remember down here, we can solo and we can mute uh, clips on our timeline. We can also do it from right here as well. Now, there's another thing that we can do here that's important for me to talk about. And what it's actually referred to now is it's referred to as group, but it used to be referred to as gang. So if you hear me accidentally refer to it as gang, it's only because that's what it used to be called. And what I'm going to do, just for the purpose of showing this to you, is I'm going to take this clip, I'm going to drag it right underneath so I can see both tracks at the same time. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to come up and I'm going to group these two tracks together. And essentially what I'm going to do is what I had just done using the adjust pan volumes on track command, except I'm just going to do it manually because now what I can do is grab one of these faders and what I do to one adjusts equally to the other one. Very cool. Okay, I'm just going to undo that again. I'm just going to undo and stick my clip back there. So you'll see the audio tool really, I mean, we're going to be dealing with mixing in the next tutorial, but you see there's a whole lot of things, you know, little details inside of the audio mixer that if you don't know, you know, is really going to cause a huge, huge, huge waste of time. Okay, a couple other things I want to show you in here. You're going to notice right now I'm limited to four tracks of audio. But what if I had more tracks in my timeline than just four? Well, no problem. Right now what's happening is, is that the mixer is only showing me the first four. I can say, well, you know what, show me eight. I can say, show me 16. So you'll see you can get in and really, I mean, to be perfectly honest, when I'm editing, I really never edit with more than eight tracks of audio. And we're going to talk about that uh, in our next lesson on mixing. But you'll see, really, right now you've got a huge choice. And, and if you had more than that amount of tracks of audio, you can also get in and assign them to groups. So you can say, well, show me the first group of 16, show me the second group of 16, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So you don't ever have to worry about running out of real estate. I mean, really, the only real estate I have to worry about now, in this case, is the screen real estate that I have. And because I'm on an iMac, I only have one screen. So screen real estate really is at a premium. So what I'm going to do is just stick that right back to four. A couple other things that we can do uh, from within the audio mixer. What we can do is we can come up, and if we have any audio effects on our clips, we can render them right from within the audio mixer. Now, I'm going to talk more about audio effects in a later tutorial, and I'm going to show you how we can take clips and slow them down and speed them up to fit inside a particular edit. What we can also do is we can come in and we can loop audio from within the audio mixer. And we can also say, well, you know what? The monitor right now is set to stereo, but I can also come in and you'll remember this from the audio output tool. I can come in and adjust that to be mono or even direct surround tracks in Pro Tools order or direct soundtracks in Simpty order. And last but certainly not least, inside of the audio mixer, you can also come in and say, well, I want this to be a stereo sequence, 5.1 sequence, or 7.1 sequence. And if you wanted to, you could actually even do punch-in records and punch-in and record audio directly into Media Composer or Symphony right here from within the audio mixer. Now, the last thing that I want to show you before I wrap up this look at the audio mixer is one that is exceptionally important. And this is something that I do all the time. Now, anytime you're going to import audio from a music CD, which of course you can do inside a Media Composer, you just put the CD into your drive, Media Composer will see it right away, you simply click Import. We talked about how mixing in television, you're always mixing to minus 10. Well, when you're working in a, a digital environment, and obviously a CD, DVD is a digital uh, digital medium that we're putting onto, what you're going to do in that case is you're going to want to have that audio mixed up to really minus 0.1 dB. So it's really going to be nice and hot. You don't want it to be at zero because that will distort. But what that also means is that when you import audio from a CD, what's going to happen is, and I'm about to blast my head off here, I'm going to hit play here, and I want you to watch how high the audio tracks are here. Now you'll see the music starts out not too bad, but what we'll do here, there we go, see it's starting to get louder. I'm just going to jump down, you'll see it peaks up there pretty loud above minus four. 
Now, in most cases, like I said, when this is coming from an audio CD, it's going to be even louder than that. The problem is that every time you're going to drop a clip into your timeline, it's going to be that loud. Well, what if there's a way to adjust this clip so it wasn't that loud every time we dropped it into a timeline? Well, there is. And how we do that is what I'm going to do is I'm going to call up the audio mixer again. I'm just going to come to audio mixer. And with this clip selected here inside my bin, and I have it selected here uh, inside of the preview window, what I'm going to do is I want to assign it a starting volume. And I'm going to assign it a starting volume of, appropriately enough, minus 10. Now you'll see minus 10 is now that clip. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to switch clips here. I'm just going to double click. You'll see that clip has now switched back to being zero. This is obviously with a new clip, so the audio mixer is now updated to reflect that new clip. But if I switch back now, you'll see that that clip is now at minus 10. So this is a way that you can get in, and instead of dropping one clip into your timeline multiple times and having to get in and adjust its volume every time, you can actually adjust the volumes once when it's in your bin, and then every time you edit it into your timeline, that volume is going to be already adjusted, so you can really just set it and forget it. Okay, coming up in our next lesson, we're going to do some basic mixing, and I'm going to show you why sometimes people overthink audio mixing, and when you're getting started in Media Composer and Symphony, you really shouldn't, because you really just need to get your projects done as quick as possible. So if you have any questions, you have any comments, or you have any tutorial requests, you can send them to Kevin P. McAuliffe at gmail.com. This has been Kevin P. McAuliffe. Thanks a lot for watching.